In this video, I'm gonna show you how to play the Metroid Prime Trilogy on PC with the Prime Hack mod, which adds keyboard and mouse support, dual stick support for controllers, custom field of view and more. It is the best way to play these games on PC. Because of YouTube guidelines, you must obtain the game on your own by ripping your copy to the PC or sailing the seven seas with Google search. Let's get going. The first thing we're gonna do is the Prime Hack mod itself, and this comes with the emulator built in. And you can get it on this page. The link will be on the description of the video. And at the moment that I'm recording this video, this is the latest version available. So whatever shows up here for you, you're going to check under assets and you're going to download this file, primehackrelease.zip, because this tutorial is for Windows PC, but this mod is also available on Mac as well. So go ahead and click here to download. And the second thing we need is Visual C++. The link will also be on the description of the video as well. So go ahead and click on this to download. And you can put this anywhere on your PC, but I'm just going to download to the same place as the Prime Hack mod. Now with the files in place, you're going to start by double clicking the VC file to start the installation. Click here where it says I agree and then click on install. There is a chance that you already have Visual C++ installed on your PC. If that's the case, you're going to see this message that says fail to install or something similar. And if that's the case, you can go ahead and close this and move on. But if not, you're going to keep clicking where it says next here until the installation is done and then you can move on. At this point, you can delete the original file. We're not going to need this anymore. Click on it and press shift delete on your PC to get rid of it completely. And then with the prime hack file, we need to extract it. So click on it with the right button of your mouse and then click on extract all. And at this window, just click on extract and wait until this is done. So now you will have this folder with you. And at this point, you can delete the original file as well. Now just double click on the folder to open it. Inside the folder, it will look like this. And the first thing we're going to do here is create a new file in this folder. So you're going to click anywhere in this folder with the right button and then select new and click on text document. And the name of this file has to be portable exactly like this. Now we can start the actual Dolphin application, which is this one. So go ahead and double click on it. And there's a chance that Windows will say that this is a unrecognized app, but don't worry, it's fine. So go ahead and click on more info and then click on run anyway. Then the emulator will start. You'll see this window. Go ahead and click on OK. And then we have the emulator with the Prime Hack mod. The reason for creating this portable file is that now we have this user folder. And this will come in handy in case you are going to use a texture pack, for example. But I'm not going to be covering that in this video. To add the game in here, as the emulator says, you need to select the directory where the game file is located. And this can be anywhere on your PC. And I have the Prime Trilogy version from the Wii. But if you have the individual games from the GameCube, it will work as well with no problems. And as I said at the beginning of the video, you must obtain the game files on your own, in which you can rip your copy to the PC or you could sail the seven seas. But this is something that I can't do here on the video because it's basically promoting piracy. And if you do that, YouTube will delete the video and strike the channel. The format that I have for the game is RVZ, but if you find it on ISO, it will work as well. So the game can be anywhere on your PC, like I said, but I'm just going to drop the one that I have here to the same emulator folder, just so that I can keep everything in one place. And now back on the emulator, you can simply drag the game into here and it will work as well. Or you can double click, which is what I'm going to do. By double clicking it, it should open the emulator folder by default. So now all you have to do is click on select folder. And just like that, the game will appear. Next, at the emulator, I'm going to show you the graphics option on this emulator to get the best quality and performance as well. So in here, click on this graphics button. And at the first window where it says general, by default, the backend is set to direct 3D 12, which works well with these games. But if you click here and see the Vulkan option, I'm going to recommend you to start playing the game with this one and see how the performance is because Vulkan can give you better performance than direct 3D 12, depending on the hardware that you have. 
On adapter, this is the video card you want to use your main GPU that is in this case. So just make sure you have your main one set here. And below that for aspect ratio, these games have 16 by nine support, but because of the original GameCube resolution in the emulator, when you play the game at full screen, you still see a black bar on the top and on the bottom of the screen. So you're gonna select stretch to window to fix that. If you see screen tearing on your gameplay, turn on the VSync option to fix that. But for now, just keep it off. Now below all of this on shader compilation, by default, the hybrid Uber shaders option will be selected. And this option works great most of the time for a performance to get rid of any emulation stutters that could happen. But if you have a really good GPU and you're still noticing stutters, then you can try playing with the exclusive Uber shaders option. But like it says right here, you need a very powerful GPU for this one. Just for reference, with my GPU, the 9070 XT, I could run the game with the exclusive option, but with the hybrid option, I was seeing very little stutters and also turn on the compile shaders option before starting. This will help with the stuttering for a short time when you start the game, but after that, it will have no effect. Now move over to the enhancements tab and the first option, internal resolution. This of course will increase the resolution of your game to make it look better. By increasing the resolution, it's going to require more of your GPU. So what you can do here is after you're done configuring everything and start the game, you can start playing with the 2x native option and see how the game looks and also the performance as well. And if everything is running good, you can come back here and increase the resolution even further up to the point where your GPU can handle. For the anti-aliasing, this is best when the internal resolution is set to native, even though it has a effect if you have a higher internal resolution. We'll make the game look better, but it will also demand more of your GPU. Now for texture filtering, this one is a no brainer. Click here and check the 16x anisotropic option. This will make the game look better and has minimal impact on performance. And that's it for the enhancements. Under the hacks tab, you don't have to change anything. And for advanced, go ahead and click on load custom textures. In case you're using a texture pack, this option has to be enabled. But even if you're not, you can turn this one as well. It will not change anything. Now for the last tab, Prime Hack GFX, this is where you have the mod specific settings, like the field of view, for example, if you wanna play with that. So this one is personal preference, it's up to you. When you're done, you can close this window. Now let's move on to the controllers option that is for keyboard and mouse and also dual stick controllers. Go ahead and click here on this controllers button. And on this window where it says Wii Remote, it should already be set to Metroid Wii Remote option. If not, click on it and then select the configure option. And by default, the Prime Hack mod already comes with the configure controller and mouse controls, and you can start playing it from there. But in my opinion, the default controls for the beans and visors can be a little confusing because you have to press E on the keyboard and then the respective number for each one of them, the same for the visors as well. And so I came up with a custom profile for the keyboard and mouse controls, which are these two files right here, one for keyboard and the other one for a controller. And you can download them at the description of the video as well. And the location where you have to drop these files is right here on the prime hack folder. Open the sys folder, profiles, Wiimote, and there you go. Now you just drag the profile that you want to use in here and go back to the emulator. If you had this window open, you have to close it for it to show up. So click on configure again and under profile, click on the little arrow and the profiles will appear. If I select keyboard and then click on load, the inputs will change. So this is the one that I use to play all three Metroid games, but feel free to change anything here to your liking. For using a controller, however, by default, the Prime Hack does not come with a profile for you, but since I also created that custom profile as well, you can use that instead of selecting each one of them. So if you don't have your controller plugged in, go ahead and do that right now. And still here on this window, click here on the little arrow 
and you're going to pick the option that says X input gamepad. Your controller could also show up under SDL and it works as well from what I tested here, but I'm just going to pick up the gamepad option. Now the same thing, profile, controller profile, and click on load. This is the one that I'm using. For the Beans controls, you have to press RB or the R1 button of the PlayStation controller and then press up, down, left or right. But you can also change anything to your liking. And that's it for the settings. We can start the game now. So go ahead and double click on it to start. And to go full screen, you have to press Alt and Enter on your keyboard. I have many other tutorial videos like this on the channel. So if you like what you saw, don't forget to check out my other stuff. Subscribe to the channel and don't forget to leave a like on this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.